we've been doing this since 2012. Uh, we started just due to, obviously, like a lot of you guys, a lot of poor choices in broadband and rural areas. Uh, for us, it was like one meg DSL, what was, was, uh, what was available back in the day, and obviously now we're doing much faster than that, you know, 50 meg, 100 meg, if a customer needs it in rural Minnesota right now. Um, I believe we're on 40 tower sites, um, and most of it is EPMP at the moment for uh, access points. Used to be ubiquity, but we elevated our network about a year and a half ago, and it was one of the best decisions we made, and then we've had pre seam in our network since December of 2017, so we're almost going on two years now. Um, also, one of the things we would never, ever give up, so I hope they never go under. Um, I don't want to go back to what we were doing before, so... Uh, we, do, we cover seven counties in southeastern Minnesota right now, and um, we continue to just kind of fill in coverage where we can with little micro pops and go deeper into the network as, we, uh, as it's feasible. And my name is Adair Winter, and I'm with uh, Amarillo Wireless. Uh, well, I guess I should say AW Broadband, formerly Amarillo Wireless. We operate really as both companies, but um, we have moved into so much uh, fiber and cable that uh, and, and areas where the end name Amarillo is not necessarily uh, respected. We um, had to really start uh, operating as a different company name. Uh, but we, we really started, I guess, um, seven and a half years ago as a, as a WISC, kind of by accident. We started as a hobby. We, uh, ham radio operators had access to a tower, started putting equipment up and uh, turned it into a business and have done pretty well since then. Um, a lot of snags along the way. You know, we, we learned the hard way. Luckily, with a lot of uh, RF experience already, we kind of at least didn't make some of the silly mistakes some people make, but we certainly have our fair share. Um, we operate out of Amarillo, Texas, and about, I mean, you drive two hours in just about every direction and still be inside of our network mostly. I think it's roughly 85 towers now, and um, uh, about 42 or 43 employees at this point. So we've gotten, gotten to be a pretty good size over the years. Um, Free seams obviously been one of the things that has been really nice for us. It's been a product that's literally came out of the gate and worked, and we haven't really had to worry about, um, and has actually allowed us to have a better network because of it. Um, I want to say that uh, what's been nice uh, as we moved into fiber and cable and things like that, being able to utilize the product um, has been awesome because we, the way our network is architected and structured. Uh, we can just, doesn't matter how you access the network, whether it's wireless or, or cable or fiber, we could just dump you in and shape you and, and everything just works great. So um, I don't know if there's any other questions sp specifically you wanted to cover, but um, we, we really have had, um, uh, I guess you would say, a really uh, fast ride over the last couple of years, and it's just not slowing down. Hi, I'm uh, Brian Gray from Joink. We are located in Terre Haute, Indiana. Um, Network covers about an hour-ish type drive in all directions. Um, let's see, I think Joink's first wireless customer would have been a little over 18 years ago, and I've been with the company um, for 17 years. Um, what time? I got into it, uh, used to do a lot of PC and uh, light networking support. Uh, Joint called me, they needed a subcontract installer in my area. Uh, I did that and then they fed me enough work that they said, hey, we love the work that you're doing um, and we want you to do more of it, but we'd like to pay you a whole lot less, so why don't you just come work for us? <laughs> uh, <coughs> so, I'm like, oh, sweet, that's, that's great. But, <coughs> uh, yeah, there, there was a period when I first started doing their tower work um, uh, for them where I was uh, way, uh, com compared to the others in the company, I was way overpaid, so I knew that 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 uh, would come to an end. Uh, anyway, so I've just never realized I should leave. <laughs> <coughs> okay. I, so maybe we'll come back this, this direction again. So is there anything about your business or geography that you think is unique? Like something that would just help set the context for everyone in the room of, of why you've done things the way you'd have or, or made decisions that you have? Well, um, I don't know that there are really too many uh, unicorn businesses here. Um, I think that's one of the great things about these shows is that you can walk around, talk to people, and uh, it's pretty unlikely that you're facing an issue that somebody else isn't also facing or hasn't already conquered. Um, 
So if you can't find a solution, you know, from one of your peers, you can at least, uh, you know, uh, cry in a couple beers together, and <laughs> have some camaraderie over it, and maybe find an ally to, uh, you know, help beat on the uh, uh, the vendors to help, you know, get your solution uh, implemented. Um, for us, it's probably the lack of trees. <laughs> I mean, I know everybody gives me a hard time about that, um, but it's it, we've had to design the network specifically um, around that. I mean, um, when you can see a tower 30 miles away, I, I sometimes it doesn't matter how much you down tilt or how much you do, it's just really hard to get away from yourself. So we've had to structure the network to make it be uh, closer to the customer, which has been um, of benefit anyway, trying to get higher speeds to the customers and deploy things like 60, 60 gigahertz and use DFS and things like that. Uh, but that's been a, un a unique design challenge, I think, for us, where some people at least can get away from themselves, mountains, trees, we can't. It's all flat. Go sorry, ahead. Sorry. You want that one? Sure. Sorry. This one's better. <laughs> this one's better. Um, so we're in southeastern Minnesota, so there's some very flat parts of land. Um, most of our farms in the country, though, have trees surrounding them, so oftentimes we have to get a dish outside a tree line, put a post in, and, and trench conduit back up to the house. Um, so some sites, we try to stay on towers that are under 200 feet if possible, um, just, again, to kind of limit range and interference amongst ourselves. Uh, but some sites where we are 300 feet, just because we can be, uh, those are the sites that I can hear from 15, 20 miles away, and it does obviously cause us trouble. Uh, so we are kind of make that decision, what, do we want range or do we want, you know, high quality network with high speeds and uh, high SNR rates and things like that. Um, there's some rolling hills in our area and, and some deep valleys that definitely present a challenge. So you kind of hope if you're uh, targeting a, a low spot area with 15 or 20 homes, there's something, a silo or a grain leg, you know, at the, the height of that that it can hopefully see down into that area. Um, otherwise, it becomes very challenging uh, to cover a certain spot. And we do not build our own tower sites. We only use what's existing out there um, just to keep things really simple and not have to worry about building our own sites. But I know a lot of WISPs are doing that. They're hiring and, and getting permits and building their 150 or 200 foot sites. We just decided against that from early on and uh, just to use what's already out there for us. To circle around, so I'll buy you guys drinks and we'll cry together. Uh, <laughs> we are flat uh, and we have trees. So by the time, uh, to get any kind of range, you have to be at least 100 feet up. And so once you're at 100 feet, then you can see for 30 miles. So uh, we're on a lot of towers where we're 150 to 200 feet up and APs can see each other 30 miles away because it's flat. <laughs> and of course, everybody wants to build their houses in the middle of trees. Right. So yeah, posts in the ground and all that good stuff. stuff. So cool. Uh, so yeah, go ahead. So you say you don't build your own towers, but do you ever go to a tower company and ask them to build a tower? So the question was, you don't build your own towers. Do you go to a tower company and, and rent tower space? Right. Or ask them to put up a building tower. I'm sorry. Or have them put up. Ask them to put up. Or have them ask them. So like American Tower or Crown Castle type thing. Um, we've talked to them, and honestly, they want you know 750 a month minimum. We've just found so many other alternative sites to fill that in with that are easier to work with and a lot cheaper. So we've just gone and, and avoided all the cell type towers like that. Um, you know, they want you to have two million dollars liability. You need to be certified climbers. Um, there's maybe five thousand upfront application fees, um, annual escalators, just a lot of not red flags but roadblocks. And if there's too many roadblocks, we just say, we'll find another way. That's what we've done. Um, I think we've taken the opposite approach. We've built a lot of our own towers because it's easy for us. We don't have to really permit a whole lot. So I'll plant a tower really, really easily if I can just find uh, somebody to lease land for, from. I, I just need access to it in like a 10 by 10 space and I can build a tower because I might only need to build 50 or 60 feet to cover an area. Um, and so we just have taken on ourselves, mostly do our own tower builds in-house, and that's um, usually pretty easy for us to do. If it gets real big, we'll contract it out, which I think was the direction you were maybe going with your question was having somebody build you a short tower that just says, hey, I just need 100 feet or 50 feet to cover an area. Like town maybe or something. Yeah, exactly. Like that. that's, that's what I was taking out of this okay. question, more or less, is that um, we, we've opted to do that in-house instead of contracting somebody to do it. But it's a, it's a fantastic way to grow your network, I think, if, you're, if it's easy to do. But so many people have issues with permitting and things, I think it starts getting, getting really frustrating to do. And, and existing towers certainly much easier to access. 
So uh, our preference is to use a pre-existing site um, as long as the owner of that site is easy enough to work with. Um, uh, you know, I think most of the people in this room probably work enough hours that uh, you, don't, you don't need a roadblock, right? You can just go work on something that's easy and do more good um, for the community. Uh, and if somebody, you know, wants to nitpick or, or um, you know, try to beat you up on your contract, your price, or uh, permitting issues, it's like, okay, town A, I'll, I'll just go over here and talk to town B, and then they, you know, roll out the red carpet and um, give you whatever access you need to, to get their area better broadband. Uh, we do construct our own towers. Um, we've also worked with individuals uh, in extremely low density areas where, uh, you know, they had a business, maybe a farm operation, they didn't have a grain leg, but they needed service. Uh, we will specify what they need to build to support the tower, you know, the gear that's going to go on the tower. And, you know, so, so we don't show up and they have a Rhone 25 stand in the air that's 90 feet tall with no guy wires on it. Um, <laughs> They can own and maintain the structure and we will pay them some level of rent or do a revenue share back. So generally we will own the gear, they'll own the structure. Um, but if, if there's enough uh, demand there, we're happy to go build the structure, own it, insure it. We don't, we don't do the construction in house. We sub that out for whatever reason our insurance carriers don't like the idea of us building the tower even though we do fiber construction <laughs> and cross gas lines every single day. Uh, they're more nervous about us, uh, you know, knocking a tower over, which would still be liable anyway if we put an eight-foot dish on a, you know, Rome 45 or something and snap the thing off and kill somebody.